Hello, everyone, and welcome back to AI Tuesdays. My name is Erika, and I am the program manager at Microsoft React to Stockholm. Today, we are going to wrap up season two of the AI and machine learning track in the Championing Azure series. Before I carry on, I just want to say a quick word about Microsoft Code of Conduct. We all come from a different background, but we are all here to learn. So please be aware of each other and be welcoming and respectful to all points of views. Thank you for that. Um, our, our speaker today have created a few learning resources for you to be able to get the maximum out of this session. So take a quick screenshot of this, um, of, of this slide and make sure to check them out. I will also drop these links into the chat just in a minute. But now let me welcome you here, our speaker today, who is Goran Vukic. Vukic sorry. Yes. Uh, Goran, how Hi. are you doing? Hello, I'm great. And you? I'm very well, thank you. It's, um, it's, a, it's a great pleasure to have you here with us in this series. Um, and I'm looking forward to have more sessions with you. As we know, you are an AI um, MVP, but maybe you will you would like to say a few words about yourself and introduce yourself to our to our audience. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm originally from Croatia, uh, moved to Denmark some seven years ago, then three years ago moved to Sweden, Malmo, uh, where I live uh, now with my uh, wife and uh, son teenager and uh, I work in Copenhagen for Pandora as the engineering manager leading the data infrastructure team um, about myself yeah I'm a tech guy and uh, very active in in community that's why MVP is uh, there AI was always interesting to me and I always try to do some interesting projects and uh, things so yeah, uh, and I like to share my knowledge in uh, different uh, workshops, uh, on conferences, uh, online meetups, and so on. Fantastic, thank you. And um, yeah, this is this is one of the reasons you know why why you are here with us today because our community leaders are our our key um, because of the, at the reactor we are or at the reactors we are all about the communities, and without your work. We could not do our work. Um, so thank you. But in today's sessions, you are going to teach our audience how synthetic data can be created and how this data can be used to train AI models, right? Yes, that's yes. correct. Looking forward to listen into this. Your session is going to run for about 40, 45 minutes. Yeah. Um, but guys out there, ask your question throughout the sessions and Goran is going to yeah answer them as as soon as he can. Um, I'm going to put myself in the background now, but um, I'm, I'm here if I'm needed. And um, yeah, I'll see you very soon. Bye. Okay, so you should be able to, to see my slides now, I hope. And uh, as, as we said, in this session, we will talk about uh, synthetic data from the generation, which we will use 3D models, all the way to AI on the edge. I will explain this uh, slowly. And I already gave uh, my quick introduction. Maybe just to uh, say here, you can find me on uh, Twitter and on LinkedIn. Like those topics I usually post about is AI, IoT, Azure, innovation, technology, and so on. Feel free to connect. Feel free also to let me know if you are creating some interesting uh, project. And uh, yeah, I'm always, uh, I always like to hear what uh, community is uh, doing out there. And uh, yeah, uh, what you do for AI, where you found uh, the use cases. So <clears throat> as I said, today we will talk about uh, synthetic data, what it is and such. and we will start with uh, computer vision and some some basic things and then slowly move uh, move forward and make this uh, more more advanced uh, session and uh, as you know today 
like we are we are able to teach our computers to see uh to be able to to recognize uh, objects in uh, pictures to classify them and so on and like when we talk about this computer vision like most common tasks there are image classification so being able to say okay is this a picture of a cat or it's picture of a dog or of raccoon or whatever right that is classification we have object detection like finding some object in the picture like okay <clears throat> in this picture cat is exactly this in this bounding box at this position right we have some other common tasks like uh, optical character recognition or ocr uh, facial recognition uh, pose estimation and so on right you've probably seen most of those uh, examples i'm i'm mentioning maybe all of them and uh, what we are interesting mostly today is actually the object detection so as mentioned like uh, object detection can give us an answer okay in this picture where specifically is some some object and as an example like uh, object detection could find the glasses in this picture right they are exactly here it would draw us the bounding box it would also give us some uh, information of okay how uh, certain it is that this those are really the glasses if you use some uh standard models like uh, if you use service computer vision uh, you would be able also to identify like uh, that in this picture there is a dog there is some laptop in the background and so on right those this is something that standard models can do because they are trained on the uh, to recognize most common objects but what we are more interested in is the custom vision and identifying the custom objects for example over here on this picture you can see some lego minifigure this is a custom object that model wasn't trained on right and uh, if you want to recognize this batman we should train our model with pictures of that batman and most likely you seen the custom vision and you try this and this out and i will show you quickly one simple project that uh, i did long time ago project was called where's chewy <clears throat> like this uh, chewbacca lego minifigure trying to find it on the lego board like uh, okay could ai find the position where chewbacca is located in order to do so it's super simple with azure custom vision you can go to custom vision ai and over there you create a new project you give it a name you write uh, some kind of description define the resource uh, select the project type it can be classification or object detection like we are aiming for object detection now and you can choose the domain in this case it's the general domain so after you create the project how how this works is that you need to create and upload the images so you need to take pictures of your objects upload them and you need to tag them like <clears throat> to tell our model like this is the this is the object we are looking for it's it is located exactly here you train the model and then you test it right so first you're taking the pictures and uploading uploading them to the to the custom vision or here you can see that i took the chewbacca and uh, took a pictures on uh, lego catalog just to have some uh, different backgrounds each time i take the picture and <clears throat> chewbacca was positioned in uh, different uh, different rotations right so i upload those pictures and then i need to tag them so for each one of them i need to select okay where this object is exactly located and i enter the tag for it right and that is our chewy 
So <clears throat> going through all those pictures, when you're done, you can train the model and you can test it. So first test that I was running, like, uh, yeah, I got some uh, bad detections, let's call them like that, right? Those, those <clears throat> figures identified are not Chewbacca. And you can see over here that uh, certainly is only 20%. So what we need to do in order to approve our model, we went through this process and now we need to go back and upload more images, tag them again, train the model and we test them, right? And we can repeat this again and again until we get some accuracy of the model that we, that we like. So <clears throat> processing the model again, like with more and more uh, pictures like you can see over here, I, I have uh, three iterations. I managed to, to identify, okay, Chewbacca is here with 40.8% uh, probability, right? So adding more pictures to this would improve, improve accuracy of the model and we would recognize it much, <clears throat> much better. Like minimal number of uh, pictures you can use in custom vision is 15. But like to get some accuracy, I suggest that you upload at least 100 of them, if not uh, 1,000. If you take a look again and think about how this process works, like you need to upload the images, you need to tag them, train, test, and then you repeat. And most of the time that you are spending is over here between <clears throat> taking those pictures and tagging them, right? So each time imagine you need, you have some minifigure that you need or any other object that you are recognizing, you need to position it different angle, different lightning, take new picture, different background and uh, so on and upload those pictures and you need to tag them. So main main uh, time consuming task is exactly over here. So could we do something about it, right? And this is where synthetic data comes in. Like um, synthetic data uh, can be used uh, to, to simulate the real world scenarios and uh, we can use it to increase uh, accuracy of our AI models. So <clears throat> what it means for this uh, object that we are detecting, we could use 3D model that is realistic and generate pictures out of it and upload them and use them for training. And that will increase like uh, increase the accuracy of our model and will greatly save us the time so some ben benefits of uh, this data is definitely to shorten data for a uh, shorten time for data collection and tagging to minimize the cost for data collection because we are spending time right it immediately results in in a cost uh, it can also reduce the bias in your training data because with 3D uh, models, so you can simulate uh, different environment, different scenarios and so on. And uh, yeah, you can uh, get more accurate AI detections. And synthetic data is not something that I made up or came up with uh, <clears throat> far from that. Like uh, on this topic, you can, you can find a lot of information uh, if you if you check uh, the internet a bit, uh, this is from what you see uh, on the slide is the graph from uh, Gartner, and they say like by 2030, use of synthetic data will be like four times more than the real data, and. Uh, I believe like they wrote over here that uh, synthetic data really is future of. AI. Because if you think, for example, real data has a lot of problems. It takes time to collect real data. It takes time to, to prepare it for, for our AI to be trained on. 
uh, there are some uh, issues like uh, we need to solve uh, GDPR and uh, so on. So collecting the data is a time consuming process. And with generation of synthetic data, we can still train the models and get the really good results, or we can improve existing models. Uh, as I said, you can find it on this Gartner research uh, that was published. You can find it uh, also on the Gartner's hype cycle released last year and so on. I suggest, uh, yeah, feel free to look into it. It's really interesting, interesting topic. Through this session, I will try to show you how to generate it, right? So let's see first some options out there, what, what we can uh, do about it and how to, how to get it. Uh, first, uh, Unity uh, tool for making games and uh, simulation released this package uh, called Unity Perception. And uh, it allows you to do exactly that, to generate data for training. And over here, you can see uh, on the picture left, like uh, some products, They're, they look realistic, right? And uh, they are actually 3D models and <clears throat> mixed together with all other products. And now if we train our AI to recognize uh, this object, it will, it will get a lot of uh, real-like scenarios, real-world-like uh, real uh, images that can be, can be recognized. Over here on the right, you see it, uh, how it's actually done. If you use Unity, uh, looks probably familiar. We have some camera. We have our objects we are trying to recognize. We have a lot of other objects in the background that are generated automatically. And what our camera sees is basically this picture. And we gener generate a lot of those, those pictures. Let me show it quickly. So. <clears throat> I'll open project uh, I have over here in um, Unity. And I'll quickly explain you uh, how, to, how to prepare, how to generate your synthetic data. You can also check this uh, perception package they are providing. So over here, I have one realistic scene. And uh, for that scene, if we zoom out a bit and Take a look what I what I have here is one map that is some kind of industry, warehouses, something, right? That looks pretty realistic when I zoom in. And over here, we have one 3D object, and that is uh, forklift that is positioned over here, right? That is our forklift. So let's imagine that we want to recognize exactly this forklift. And this is not something that uh, standard models can, uh, can uh, provide to us. So we need to train it customly. Maybe standard models could recognize, okay, this is a forklift, not a car, but maybe we want exactly this, this model of forklift, right? So in... Uh, in Unity, we can easily use uh, 3D objects to place them around to create such scene. And we can create our object that we want to, want to define. Uh, if we play, press play, now we can see how our scene looks like. As you can see over here, I'm looking from the back of the forklift. Reason for that is that we have one camera here. Camera is one invisible object positioned here, right? You can see it uh, preview as I'm moving it up and down, right? And uh, it's looking at our object. Nice thing about Unity is that it supports C Sharp. So over here, we have one C Sharp script. Let me open the Visual Studio code where you can see it a bit better. So what we have over here is uh, Standard uh, standard class, how uh, Unity is, defines it. It's uh, if you know C sharp, super easy to to start working here. And as I said, uh, Unity is a game framework. You can uh, try to write some game. It's always fun, right? 
but like what happens in this script is basically uh, we have two functions. One is start and one is update. Start executes once we start our project, start our scene, <clears throat> that code is executed. And update is called once per frame. So every time frame updates, this function will be called. And inside of this function, we are call calling function rotate that will be applied to the object where script is attached. So we update that object and we are updating it as a vector where we pass, uh, <coughs> pass the parameter time that has passed and acceleration, which is just defined as a float number over here. So <coughs> we, in our project, We'll take the script and we will attach it to our forklift. So if I click here on the object, you can see on the right side, there is a script attached, right? When I press play, what will happen is that script is automatically applied. And as I said, our object started rotating. Now imagine, <clears throat> What, what you could do with it. You can take screenshot every second or half second or uh, <clears throat> whatever time frame you define. And with that image, you could train your model, right? So you will have pictures of your forklift from all angles. Maybe you can notice also that there are some particle effects over here, like dust is flying. And if you pay attention a bit in the back, you can see the shadow. So you can also play with the lightning effects from different angles. You can put some uh, noise like this uh, dust and such to simulate the real world environments. We could also apply this script to the whole uh, map that we have here. Just a second to open up the, the map or here, the static part of map that is the all the buildings. So I attached the same script. So beside the rotating the forklift, also the background will rotate. So if I press play, <coughs> we can see the forklift is actually rotating right around and the whole background is rotating so we are getting different different pictures that look like real scenarios and are sufficient for training of ai models so it's pretty it's pretty cool as i said if you know c sharp you can do a lot over here and i suggest that you that you try it out to get back to our uh, presentation. One other tool that is out there is uh, <clears throat> NVIDIA's Omniverse Replicator. And uh, what they are doing with this replicator is like they're building a simulation framework uh, in order to produce accurate synthetic data for training of uh, autonomous vehicles and for training robots. So those are mostly simulations inside of uh, warehouses, on the roads and such. You can uh, look, look for that. It was released a few months ago and uh, you can try to do the same. Like if you have some scenario, uh, self-walking robot or self-driving robot car, you can uh, try to train the model with this framework and see how, how it works. It's, it's really cool. So the question is, are there some other ways to generate synthetic data? Can we create it on our own programmatically? And to demonstrate that, I will uh, use JavaScript. And um, yes, it's the most used program in the uh, prog <coughs> programming language in the world, but also uh, my take on it is that if it works in browser, it probably works everywhere, right? So if we can generate synthetic data in a browser, we could we could easily do it uh, in many many different uh, with many different programming languages and such. To achieve this, I will use 3GS, and that is a JavaScript library uh, that is used for. Uh, 
3D uh, 3D uh, graphics in a browser by use of WebGL. You can find it uh, on 3js.org website, and you can find the GitHub repository. If I switch to my browser now, second, you should see page 3js. And over here on this page, there is a lot of examples that are uh, that are <clears throat> from different uh, companies or people that uh, made using 3, uh, 3JS. But over here, beside the rich documentation, you have examples. And we will take a look at that. OK, what is this supposed to do? And <clears throat> here, you can see in the browser, I'm in the Chrome at the moment, you can see some 3D model that I'm rotating at the moment, and you can see it is also animated, right? So this, this uh, 3JS is loading the models in the, in the browser. There is a lot of examples that can show you how, how this works, and it's really nice. Um, you can experiment with many different things, like uh, different... Uh, effects, reflections, uh, lightnings, uh, and so on. Many useful things that you could actually use while you uh, render your scene uh, in order to make it more, more realistic, right? Applying different effects to the, to the, your objects like uh, reflections and, and so on. Uh, here you can see the effect of effect of light and uh, lens flares, which you could render on your on your pictures when you when you generate them. Many different uh, examples over here worth checking out, like dynamic light that is passing, shadows, and so on. All these effects we are able to use to generate like uh, really realistic realistic pictures. OK, so how we do that, right? Uh, let me get back to my studio code. And over here, I will open one example. I want to uh, show you. Just need to run the 3JS locally so I can show how it looks like. Now it should work. So if I go back to my browser and open this page, there is a, some model of, you can probably guess, R2D2. And this is actually a realistic model of our <coughs> small R2D2 that I have over here. You can, you can uh, probably see it, right? It is in several lego sets i got mine with uh, millennium falcon uh difference to this one and what we have on the screen is that uh this one has some textures right it has colors and such and we just seen the model but we can all agree that this is realistic <clears throat> uh what we've seen on screen is realistic representation of this this object okay so getting back to our 3d model now we have it right here, and I will show you how the page looks like where this model is actually generated. There will be some code, but please note most of it is the standard template that 3JS is using. So over here in the code, we have our script where we define some initial things <clears throat> in our uh, function in it. And uh, we de define one container where we will hold our scene, right? For our scene, since it's 3D, we need to define the camera. Looking at the scene, we define the camera and we define the scene. We need some kind of uh, light. So we will define hemisphere light and directional light looking at the scene. We don't want it to be dark. This is standard code example, so you can check it out. I may be scrolling a bit faster, but standard things how you set up 3JS. I'll go slower on the things I want. So on the scene, we want to have some kind of 
ground, one plane where our object is sitting. That is defined over here. And that ground we will have a grid. If we look at our browser, right? This is our ground. That's our plane and plane has a grid all over it, right? Cool. So <clears throat> on the scene, we loaded the model. You can check the example how to load FBX model here as defined. I'm loading R2D2. That's the model. And this model we add to, to our scene. OK. And basically, this is all that happens for now. We just add object to, to scene, and that is it. So with the slight modification of standard template of 3JS, we just said, OK, load me this R2D2 model over here. So we have it here. Let's see what we can do about it. As you can see here, I have textures defined. And there is a texture for the head and body. This object consists of two parts and needs to load the texture on head and texture on body. We go through the child objects of our main object and apply head to head, body to body. I will save this, go back, refresh the page, and you can see texture is applied here and here. And now it really looks realistically, right? So what else can we do over here? Let's uh, add some background. So we could add the uh, background over here. But before we apply that, it is good to disable this ground and grid because that's what's flying mid scene, right? So if I go back, I will comment out ground and I will comment out grid. Save, reload our page. OK, we have our R2D2 here. I'm able to rotate it. And we have some Star Wars background. This is official Star Wars background that you can, uh, you can find uh, Star Wars uh, wallpapers. On, on official site, one of them I'm using over here, right? And we have our, our object that looks really realistic. What else could we do? We could write a function to animate the camera. So over here, I will comment the function to animate the camera. It does small mathematical calculation how to how to spin around. If I go back and refresh my page, our object is now flying around. It will slowly rotate over time. And uh, out of this, we would be able to generate a lot of images, right? A lot of images that could be used for the AI training. And uh, what's nice also is that you could rotate it from the all angles, not just from the front. As usual is a common mistake, taking a lot of pictures from front of object. And then when you turn it on side, your AI detection is not working, uh, working correctly. OK, nice. So we have example working. But how do you take pictures? So <clears throat> for that purpose, you could use Playwright. And uh, this is uh, this is a Microsoft uh, framework for web testing and automation. It uh, allows uh, testing in uh, Chromium, Firefox, uh, WebKit, like uh, with a single uh, API call. Uh, really works. Uh, cross browser uh, is. Uh, cross-platform, uh, being able to use it in multiple languages. And uh, you can test it in, um, yeah. Uh, it's really great for, for uh, testing and such. And what we can do with Playwright easily is we can take a screenshot of this page where we put our realistic model with some backgrounds. We could additionally play with lights, switch different backgrounds while we do so, and so on. So how this could look like based on this example over here, I'm still using the official uh, Star Wars wallpapers, is that I'm changing 
changing the wallpaper and the object is rotating. You can see it R2D2 in, in uh, different uh, positions over here, right? So we can use this for training and train. In order to test the model, we could test it here quickly, but we could also test it on some kind of device. And what I wanted to show you, uh, like where I, AI is actually going, AI is trying to be more decentralized and trying to go more to the edge. Why? For the reason that we want to be, <clears throat> want to be able to do AI vision at the point and upload only important data points to the cloud. Other way would be that we stream all the data from our camera to the cloud, do detection over there, and uh, that could require uh, a lot of bandwidth, this bandwidth, how to get data to the cloud. Uh, if we have a lot of cameras, and now we imagine one industry, right? There is a lot of those production lines where we can place the cameras to monitor, okay, is the product assembled correctly? Did something fell off the, this line? A lot of those AI uh, use cases uh, can be developed over there. So streaming all those videos to the cloud and processing there is kind of not a great uh, solution. It is better to have something at the edge processing the video at the moment, being able to spin this model, processing the model and just getting the data points to the cloud. Like, yes, uh, it's okay. Uh, those objects are detected over here and so on. For that purpose, Microsoft uh, came last uh, spring, uh, last year, uh, I think it was in March. Uh, yeah, March. Uh, came out with Azure Percept. Uh, that is like a family of this hardware and software designed to <clears throat> exactly for this purpose, for using IoT and AI on the edge. And what Microsoft is uh, promising with this device is that you can set it up and run um, the proof of concept in minutes. And uh, if it write out, I think you can get your first project running in something like 10, 15 minutes for, for sure. What it is actually <clears throat> consists of the three devices in the middle over here, you can, you can see the main board. And to it uh, connects the camera, which is here on the right. So you can uh, connect camera to it, smart camera, and uh, it will uh, give you the video feed, which you can automatically on that video feed uh, detect, uh, detect some objects, for example. And it also in the top left corner comes with the Microsoft phone audio array that will allow you to, uh, pr <clears throat> to process uh, language, uh, natural language processing. So it will give you, you could uh, talk with this device. You could uh, give it some, some kind of commands. In the Azure portal, you can find uh, Azure Percept Studio and uh, I don't have it open up, Ops portal. Yeah, I can show you quickly here. If I go into portal, open the Percept Studio, like what you can see over here is uh, one simple interface where you can see a list of your devices. You can select what kind of project you want to work on, like vision or speech. And the uh, UI will guide you through <coughs> in a simple steps, like, are you new to AI models? Uh, do you want to try out simple applications? Or you maybe want to go with some advanced tools and uh, try them out. Uh, most common question I get, okay, where can I get this device on the Microsoft Store? So feel free to check it out. Uh, what we can do through the studio, we can use some standard vision models, like to do the general object detection, people detection, detecting products or, on shelves or vehicle detections. Those models uh, come out of the box, right? There are some voice assistant templates that you can try out, uh, show, showcasing possible use in hospitality, healthcare, inventory, automotive. And um, you can do your custom model uh, testing over there. 
So you can go in the Azure Percept Studio, select your device and deploy model to it. In this case, we will deploy the custom vision model for our uh, R2D2. So when you select the model, you are selecting the model directly from the custom vision, which is super nice and super easy to do. And you are able to see your uh, live camera live camera feed. And this is how test for the for the R2D2 uh, model look like. Uh, over here, I'm using uh, camera on percept. You can see that the detection is uh, pretty high. I think I use something like uh, 100 pictures and over here lightning is not, not really uh, perfect, but it works really nice. And what's the most beautiful thing about it? This model never seen the real object. It was only used, it was only trained with use of 3D object, right? All data used for training of this model was synthetic data. I would also like to show you quickly one project that I work on in my free time. It is uh, it is called Synthetic AI Data. Uh, project is supported for my, by Microsoft or startups. Uh, if you have some project, uh, even idea, not necessarily that you all already started uh, with development, you can apply it to Microsoft or startups and get some Azure credits to support. Um, to get your support for this. Um, I think it's really worth to, to check it out. And uh, as I said, you can apply as idea, you can apply like, uh, okay, my project is in development. Maybe you want to scale it based on those steps where you are in the project development. Uh, that's how much uh, credits you can get, or you, uh, you can get some licenses and you can also get support from the Microsoft experts to, to help you out with fine tune, tuning your, your project. Uh, project I work on, this is how it looks. It's basically one simple uh, software as a service tool, web where you can go upload your 3D model and generate pictures. In this example, I'm using uh, realistic realistic 3D uh, model of uh, green sea turtle, right? And uh, this is a quick, uh, quick demo where model is uh, uploaded. Uh, we apply the textures to it, similar what you've uh, seen today. You define what kind of uh, backgrounds and uh, lightning you would like to use, camera rotation, how many images, and you integrate it directly into custom vision. And those are test results from custom vision, like those sea turtles pictures you see over here, the <clears throat> detection of them is done with model that is that was trained only on synthetic data. And it's pretty cool, I think. So yeah, feel free to check it out. If you are interested, like uh, follow on LinkedIn for the for the updates when this will, this will uh, go live. And uh, yeah, uh, I would like to say thank you. <laughs> and uh, I hope the topic was interesting. Uh, there is a lot more that can be said on uh, topic of synthetic data. I focused it only now on the computer vision, but uh, that is, uh, yeah, uh, something we definitely go, we are going forward. We will see more synthetic data used uh, in many different industries. And uh, feel free to check it out, try to generate some of your data, see how you can improve your models and uh, how to maybe train the full model on the, only on synthetic data. What kind of results that will, that will produce. Thank you, Goran. Thank you so much for today's session. Um, we have a question. What is the LinkedIn link? Um, LinkedIn to your LinkedIn, I guess? Or... Uh, yeah, I guess to this project, maybe. Yeah. I'll, I'll uh, paste it in the in the chat. Just You uh, can't. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's 
admin thing. So, but you can send it to me on the private chat, and then I can paste yeah. it in. Okay. So there it is. Yes. Synthetic AI data all together. So it's um, yeah. Yes. Very good. Um, any other questions, guys? Yeah, we have we have about thirty seconds, by the way. Um, with yeah, no, <laughs> no worries. We can, uh, yeah. Have it is, but uh, maybe in the meantime, you can tell us how how you got into AI and what made you get into AI. Well, yeah, like uh, I usually tell a story. When, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a pirate at some point, but not software pirate. I, I had no idea what software is. Uh, so, you know, like uh, eye patches, swords, uh, big ships uh, sailing and uh, those things. And I was thinking, like, why I'm not living in that time back then? And uh, later on, uh, a few years later, uh, I was uh, I wanted to explore the jungles and uh, probably because of Indiana Jones movies we've all been there right and uh, I was thinking why I'm not living in few centuries back like uh, there's nothing left to explore on this planet anymore and things like that so those things change over time and uh, as I grew up and figure out I want to work in uh, IT and, and such like uh, I figure out like uh, also we are living in the most exciting age of uh, human history like there are so many things happening around us every day like uh, if you check the, any news out there what technology companies are doing uh, every day there are some great news and uh, i uh, i find personally a lot of excitement in uh, those things that ai can actually achieve and uh, yeah, being able, uh, you know, for a computer not to understand yet, but uh, to, to be able to recognize your voice commands or to be able to recognize the picture to tell you what it is and uh, so on. I think it's really, uh, really great. So that's my story, I would say. <laughs> I think you are muted. Muted? Maybe? Is it me? No, I muted myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, um, I got, what was I saying? I was just like, saying thanks and um, yeah, that was a really, really great story and I love the Indiana Jones part of it. And um, as you mentioned that you are, you're living down in Malmö and I am, I am here up in Stockholm. Um, hopefully, Hopefully in the near future we can have you here in Stockholm and then we can have like an in-person AI workshop. Um, yeah, that would be great. And I really miss those uh, more of those in-person events <laughs> to be able to connect with uh, with people with community more, right? So yes. Yeah, and now awesome. now that we are going into the summer and then now our reactor is opening up. So we are we are looking into like hybrid events and having having workshops um, from the reactor and then, but obviously we understand that our our audience is not just Stockholm based but we have yeah. we have viewers from all over the world and they can't travel so we are we are going to be live streaming from the reactor so um, I'm definitely gonna keep you in that um, Thank you. in that thought um, and have you have you with us. With some with some AI workshops, um, there's no more questions. So um, for in that case, and um, I think we are going to wrap up today. Yeah. And um, yeah, we are going to. I'm going to thank you once again. Thank you, Goran, for for thank being you. with us. And um, I hope to see you soon. Likewise, thank you. Have a nice evening, and guys, you thank too. you for being with us again. Um, you always know. You can always review. Um, the the sessions for review the uh, the sessions again on our playlist in, in youtube thank you for being with us today have a nice day and have a nice evening bye